So I'm basically in this building here. That's a castle. Um, I took you near it yesterday. So this building here, what's interesting is that... Welcome to day 19. Today is a Monday. It's a pretty grey and wet Monday out there. Nonetheless, I woke up to the noise of worksite activities, so they're hard at work out there even though it's raining. They seem to like to wear their hard hats when it's raining, which is kind of curious and a little bit worrisome. Um, yeah, I don't know whether I will actually be able to get out for that long today for my walk, which I always try to do. And maybe I'll have to forget the, f the fact that I've got pink suede shoes and that they will get muddy if I walk out in the rain. But it's the only shoes I have so to walk, um, to walk in, so it's got to be. So yeah, so the numbers for Portugal for today have come in. Uh, we, we're nearing 12,000 confirmed cases here in Portugal with 11,730 cases uh, and 311 deaths. So that's 16 more deaths uh, than yesterday. But they are kind of optimistic and saying that the rate of increase in confirmed cases has a, from yet from yesterday was only 4% which is the lowest apparently since the start of the pandemic here in Portugal so they are kind of getting optimistic and i think that's generally the case in europe but and also in um, in queensland uh, they're also thinking that the curve has has definitely become flatter. 14 new cases since yesterday for today, Monday. Hi friends, welcome to my channel. I'm Isabel. I hope you're enjoying this series of videos I filmed in Lisbon. I am now back in Australia, as you can probably guess. Yes, I made it back home, but not without lots of adventures along the way, including my two weeks in hotel quarantine in Melbourne after I got back to Australia, which I also filmed. So be sure to subscribe and come back and watch those videos as I upload them. So take care and see you next time. And there's an ongoing reduction in cases, which uh, makes uh, things look pretty good. So that's, that's good. So yay, Australia, you've actually managed to slow down the spread. It looks, that, it looks like that so far. But um, in the um, United States, it's an entirely different story. It's becoming um, quite dramatic. Their numbers are just escalating vertically. It's now, the United States is now the country of the world with most confirmed cases. The second one is, is Spain, which is next door. That's really scary. But yes, yeah, so the United States, and especially in New York, where they're thinking it's just going to be a pretty, a pretty terrible week coming up. That's what they're predicting. 
the president, uh, Donald Trump in America, continues to say that he won't be wearing a mask and that it's voluntary. But I tell you what, Boris Johnson is probably wishing he had worn a mask. Uh, back in the days, he was talking about herd immunity and, you know, not really going for the whole business of testing people and just vaguely asking people to stay home. And it would all sort of figure itself out. Well, it hasn't figured itself out. Um, UK is having escalating confirmed cases as well. They haven't reached the flattening of the curve there. Um, and Boris Johnson was admitted to hospital last night, so uh, Sunday, yesterday. And uh, they say he was admitted to just a, as a precautionary measure. Obviously, he wouldn't have been admitted if he wasn't getting worse. So we sort of wish him well, right? So um, him and everyone else in the hospital. Also yesterday, Sunday, the Queen of England addressed a nation and she sort of basically said, hang in there. So that's my words, not hers. Uh, she basically said that we'd all be proud of our behaviour during this crisis. It will be a sad day, won't it, when when the Queen will, will be gone? I mean, she's not my Queen personally, either as a Portuguese national or as an Australian national, but she really represents much of the 20th century and quite a bit into the 21st century, don't you think, at least in the English-speaking world? Um, Anyway, so that's that's an aside. So there's a method to my madness. When I go out walking, it's not just to film the beautiful streets in Lisbon. It's also for my exercise because my daily goal is 10,000 steps. And if I go into my Fitbit app, today I've got 3,343 steps already. I did a little bit of walking in place while I was waiting for the rice to cook. And yesterday I managed to get 10,000, over 10,000 steps, um, even though it was a fairly short walk up to the castle, which I filmed and we saw a peacock. It was beautiful. And so... Saturday, also over 10,000 steps, but not too much over. Friday, a bit like Sunday, almost 11,000. Thursday, um, oh, Thursday was really good, wasn't it? Gee, that's good. That's what I like. Um, Wednesday, 12,000, not too bad. That's what I'm aiming for at the moment because 10,000, even though it's my goal, it's actually not as good as I can do and I prefer to go over 10,000 because there's always those days where you go under 10,000. Tuesday, over 12,000. Oh, sorry, Tuesday, just over 10,000. Monday, just over 10,000. So yeah, as you see, I do a lot of, um, well, I do enough walking to maintain my goal, which is at least 10,000 a day. And it's one of the things that helps me to sleep really well. It's also one of the things that, um, I guess it keeps me healthy of body. I mean, it keeps me active and, um, I don't know, I just feel so much better. So if you can actually get out of the house at least once a day or even walk in place somewhere, I highly recommend it because if you're feeling a little bit unwell, it might be because, uh, well, it might be because you've got a virus, hopefully not, definitely call your doctor, but otherwise it might just be because your muscles are not being exercised and... Um, your mood gets affected, well, my mood gets affected. Um, meanwhile, meanwhile, yes, my family are still well, still patient in Australia, coping well, probably coping better than I am in respect to the weather. It's pretty dreary weather here, not there. <laughs> I thought I'd show you a little bit about my neighbourhood. So I'm basically in this building here 
that's a castle. Um, I took you near it yesterday. So this building here, what's interesting is that the satellite image is from a couple of years ago. Here it is. It's from a couple of years ago, and so it's changed a little. Okay, that's my building. And this is the window I keep looking out of with the flowers. Um, uh, in a flower box, the, fl the fake flowers. And this is uh, the other living room window. This is uh, the, the, the little bedroom's window. So, But anyway, can you see here this building that they're building at the front with much activity did not exist a couple of years ago. There used to be a, a very low to the ground hut uh, down here. And I remember looking out this window and an old lady lived here. I guess she also lived here. And she had a dependency here. I think it was her kitchen. I'd see it come out and hang out some washing here. And then one day the old lady was gone. And then when I came again, they had started rebuilding this entire building, which obviously a couple of years ago was in complete abandon. And they also started to build here. So what do you see here, those attic windows pointing sort of that way? They're all here, that roof that they're, they're, make, they're um, building. But so that's what it looked like. So this is an historic picture, I guess. And can you see how close it is to downtown? So that's my building. And then here is Martin Nij. I haven't taken you to Martin Nij, really. I'll do maybe... Maybe I'll do that today. Anyway, uh, that this is Praça da Figueira. Okay, so where am I? Okay, so I'm here. Praça da Figueira. And the supermarket where I sometimes go to is over there. Let's see if we can have a better shot. That's its awning. And then I'll take you to Rusio. That's the, one of the Rusio metro's entrances is, uh, is there. And this is the most famous square in Lisbon, Rusio. Um, with its uh, national theater. I've often walked along here and showed you. Anyway, let me show you from a bit further away. Teatro Nacional Dona Maria Segunda. Yeah. So, yes, and that's Praça de Figueira with the supermarket. And, oh, no, I'm here. That's it. And this is Largo da Rosa um, with the palace. And yesterday I took you along here, Rua das Farinhas. And then I came up here. And then along here, and then along here, and then that arch, the castle's arch, uh, in through there. And around here is where we saw the peacock, and the castle, the castle's entry, legal, well, the paid entry, the ticket office is here, and then you go in. So, yeah, so that's it. That's my neighborhood. Uh, this is the River Tagus, Tejo as we call it in Portuguese. This is Praça do Comércio. I keep showing you there with the yellow buildings. See those yellow buildings? I keep showing them to you. And yeah. So, yeah, it's going to be pretty hard for me to go out, but I will manage somehow. And I'll give you some footage of that, whatever it may be. Lots of raindrops, maybe. So, I guess this is all for today. Stay well, stay inside, and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.
blue crane. This is Martin Nish. Looks a bit sad today. It used to be quite an animated square, very multicultural. Lots of um, Chinatown is very nearby. Uh, it's just a very multicultural place. Look at that steep. steep stairway. It's supposed to have an escalator next to it. It obviously isn't working. Or maybe it is working actually. We might try on the way back. Let's go around the Tunis over here. It's not raining but it's been such a wet day. I don't know, I wonder if the rain actually cleans things or it just makes it easier for the virus to be transmitted. It's hard to guess, isn't it? There's so many things they don't know yet about the virus. It's just so crowded in there with tiny shops and uh, it's a bit of a shady sort of shopping mall, that one. And they are considering actually taking the whole building down because it just hasn't worked as a commercial experiment, as anything experiment. Pretty sure there are people who live in the shops and it's just not not good. Hmm. A bit of a fountain thing. A pond. It's a Vinid Almirant Reich a long avenue. You know, catch a taxi from the airport, which is actually not that far away from here, surprisingly. I always uh, drive down um, to here along Almirant Reich, of Almirant Reich. It's always my introduction to Lisbon, and yeah. Enjoy coming into Lisbon. It's a it's a happy day for me to be here when I arrive. Very exhausted from a 36-hour flight, but very happy to be here. And then I'll be recovering from jet lag for the first few days. I'm not seeing many people generally because I'm just so exhausted that everyone thinks I'm ill. And um, because Portuguese tend to have dinner quite late in the evening so they might start having dinner at 9, 30, 10 p.m. and if they invite me to dinner I'm just sort of a mess I can't stay awake and then I can't concentrate on the conversation so generally <laughs> I just decline 
all invitations for the first few days and just go out for, for walks and I clean the apartment and get it organized and do a bit of reading and writing but otherwise I don't usually see that many people in the first few days then I start seeing many people my family, my friends um, start looking at the properties that I have here and that I need to manage and, and this time I came here to sell one particular property and I'm not sure if that's been a success or not because the buyers haven't said anything for a few days they gave me an offer and then they have been very quiet so I don't know don't know what's happening in that department sort of don't want to rush them but on the other hand I need to know what's going on because if they're not buying it or if they think they, sh they can only buy it at the end of the year um, I have to start thinking of ways of getting out of Lisbon and into Australia So I've done quite a few steps indoors in the apartment because I thought it was going to rain all day and just be terrible out here. It's actually not rainy and it's the temperature is okay actually. And um, I still need about 3,000 steps. I sort of wonder should I go far afield or should I just go to Praça de Figueira, do a little sort of roundabout there and then I need more milk I think, go to the supermarket. I really don't think I should go to the supermarket so often. I don't know why I do, in a way. I don't actually need milk for tomorrow, I still have enough. So if I went back home empty handed, I'd be fine. But it's like the survival instinct hits, doesn't it? You sort of want to be over prepared. I'm not actually hoarding. If you've seen my pantry, you'll know that I'm not hoarding but I'm actually buying more now than I ha ever have admittedly when I'm here usually I eat a lot out I eat with friends family I get invited or I go out for, for a meal on my own which is perfectly acceptable here and I don't know if it's acceptable anywhere else I always do it go out have a meal and come back home um, just so I don't have to cook myself also I enjoy Portuguese cooking and I make the most of it while I'm here even Portuguese restaurant cooking I enjoy it oh it's a bit breezy here 